From podium to podcast is what today's video is all about. I wanna share with you what I have learned over the past couple of years and during my time on the Vineyard Church staff team. If you're a pastor, public speaker, or someone with a message, then creating a podcast is a great way to share it. It's super simple to get started, so in this video, let's take a look at the equipment you'll need, how to edit the audio, and how with the right hosting platform, you can send it to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, all at the same time. I said this will be simple. Hi, I'm Nathan from Ohio, and welcome to Crazy Amazing Designs on YouTube. I have spent the past six years doing video production for clients, conferences, and events. I served as a worship leader and then began serving and eventually joined the staff team of Vineyard Church in Wheeling, West Virginia. Leading the video team and continually learning new techniques and skills in videography, streaming, live sound, and lighting. In my spare time, I have learned skills like 3D design and printing, programming in Arduino, and just a little gaming. I have organized this video with timestamps that will show on the screen. These sections will help us look at the different key parts of creating a podcast. So let's dive in. More than half of all US consumers above the age of 12 are listening to podcasts on their own. And plenty of kids birth to 12 are listening in cars with their parents. This means way more than half of the population consumes podcast content on a weekly basis. So if you have a message to share, then you should definitely have a podcast. I have several podcasts that I keep up with anytime I'm in the car. For me, I'd much rather invest that time by listening to a meaningful podcast or audiobook. Many churches use podcasts to share sermons and interviews, which is what most people will consume for a long time before they ever step into the building. However you decide to use your podcast, be sure to have intentionality as you incorporate it into your social media strategy. For those who are church pastors or public speakers and speak on a regular basis, you might already have people that record audio of your speaking. For you, it is a simple matter of coordinating with the correct people for a copy and then uploading it to your podcast. They can use free services like Google Drive and Dropbox to upload the audio file and then send you a link. Anytime you're planning to get an audio recording from the venue you're speaking at, I highly encourage you to get samples in advance of recordings they have done recently. While it may be easy to overlook this, it's a simple step to making sure that their quality is in par with your podcast standards. This way, if the audio isn't being recorded or if it isn't good, you can make arrangements to record it yourself. Now let's talk about how and what you will need to record your audio. The easiest way for you to get good audio every time is to purchase a lav mic. This is a mic that clips onto your shirt and records to a battery powered body pack. They use a micro SD card and can record for many hours nonstop. The recorder I recommend is the Tascam DR10L. I have recorded hundreds of hours, vlogs, sermons, hosting, interviews, weddings, YouTube videos with this recorder. It's a trusted and powerful tool in my kit. If you follow us on Instagram at Crazy Amazing Designs, I have shared the best settings to record speaking with your Tascam DR10L recorder. If you're watching this video after 2020, then I have linked the settings in the video description. A lav mic is perfect for recording a presenter because it works anywhere, and it doesn't matter if the church or venue also has a microphone for you. Just clip theirs on beside yours, or hold their handheld and leave yours clipped on. All you have to do is remember to hit record before you begin speaking. And if you're one of those people who always has something interesting to say, you could hit record when you turn it on and use it through the day to record conversations. Using a lav mic is a good option, but it isn't always the best option. Sometimes you'll want to record a presenter or multiple presenters microphones. There are two options I suggest. Number one, record a mix directly from the sound mixer into a recorder. And number two, attach a Y splitter to the mic cable, which has two outputs. One sends the signal back into the mixer and the second goes to an audio recorder. When you start looking at a sound system for the purpose of recording audio, you're most likely going to encounter these four types of connections. An XLR cable is typically a microphone cable. A quarter inch cable is typically thought of as a patch or a guitar cable. An eighth inch jack is the connector used for wired headphones and in-ear monitors. An RCA, which is an old school connection used to connect audio and video from DVD players to a TV. The last important connection is a Y cable or a splitter. This cable plugs into the audio source and then gives you two outputs. One output goes to the original destination and the other goes to your recording device. Unless you have a computer mic that uses USB, you will likely see mics with XLR ports on them. The mic will have the male port and the cable will connect from the female port side. 
Anytime you're using a condenser mic, such as most podium mics or this SM7B I'm recording with, these are commonly used for podcasts and musical recordings. Mics like this require phantom power, which is plus 48 volts, and is a way to power certain microphones. Most mixing consoles and audio recorders can provide phantom power with the flick of a switch. It's important to know about phantom power because if you're using an XLR Y cable on a mic connected to a mixing console, then you don't need to activate phantom power since the source is already providing it. But if you're using a mic without a mixer that requires phantom power, then you won't have any signal from the mic until you add phantom power. So now that we have discussed the connections you will likely see, let's talk about how we record each of these signals. The easiest option other than clipping a lav mic to the speaker is to record the output from a mixing console, but even that isn't ideal if you want to be able to mix multiple microphone recordings in post, from a panel discussion or a debate. If the mixer is analog like this, it might have an REC out, which is an output of the main board mix. This uses the RCA style connection, which you can convert from RCA to eighth inch, XLR, or quarter inch. You might not have the RCA out on your mixer, but all analog mixers have at least one aux send. The aux typically uses a quarter inch or XLR output. Each channel on the mixer will have a knob that can be raised and lowered to send more or less of that channel to the aux mix. If you have a digital mixer, then you can record through an XLR mix bus. Using these techniques, you should be able to get a signal from any mixer. A device such as the Zoom H5n is a great investment for recording audio from any quarter inch, XLR, or eighth inch source. Recording the output from a mixing console does have its downsides. If the engineer has EQ settings or effects activated on vocal channels, you won't get a clean signal. To get around this issue, you can use the Y adapter we discussed. Add this cable to the mic channel, send the first output to the original destination, and plug the second into your recorder. If you want to record multiple channels at the same time, you should look into the Zoom F6 or Zoom H8. These can record six XLR inputs versus the two from the H5n. If you have an X32 or digital series mixer, then you can digitally record the necessary channels through the mixer's USB connection. You can put the USB drive into the console in the face, click view, go to the config tab, arrow over one, and then on this page, you can select what you record. So we can record any mix bus instead of the main left and right, or we can just record the main left and right. For any X32 console or rack, plug a USB Type-B cable into the port on the audio interface expansion card. Then you will be able to use the console as an audio interface, XUSB on your computer. Using free software like GarageBand, you can record up to 32 channels as a multi-track recording. Make sure the settings under routing, card out, are set to the same as the inputs. Also, if the default interface card on the console has been replaced with a Dante card or other card, you might not be able to plug in your USB cable. But at that point, I can almost guarantee that someone is recording audio. Editing your podcast audio should be simple. No matter if you're on Mac or PC, there are free audio editing programs out there for you to assemble your podcast. GarageBand on Mac and Audacity on PC are the ones I would look into. While you are in the pre-production planning stage of your podcast, decide on the style, the elements, the breaks, the type, and location of music. If you're at church posting weekly messages, then you might want to take 30 seconds in the beginning and say, welcome to my podcast, or welcome to our church name here, that is. Share any relevant information about your church, but remember that people will be potentially listening to this two years from the publishing date, and they don't need to know about the event happening in two weeks. A better option is to tell them to visit the church website to learn more about the church and gathering times. Also, use this opening message to let them know who is speaking today. At the end of the episode, bring the music back up and share a simple closing message. Invite your audience to rate the podcast and hit subscribe before sending them back to the website to find other messages and details about visiting in person. To record these intro and outro clips, you can use the same mic as you speak with, or plug a microphone into your audio recorder and capture it that way. To create a podcast show and episodes, we need a hosting platform. There are several to choose from, each have different pricing and features available. For a free solution, check out the website anchor.fm. It is a great platform with incredible features. You can easily use their online drag and drop editor to assemble audio files and create your episode, add music, and publish with just a few clicks and a tap. The site I use is Transistor. This has been a great platform for our church. It's simple to create a new podcast episode, add a title, upload the audio file, artwork, and summary. You can really personalize the episode by adding the author's name, keywords, as well as show notes for the listeners. 
My favorite feature is the ability to schedule the podcast to go live at just the right moment. Transistor shows us analytics and listener trends for each episode, which means we know when, for how long, and where people are listening. You might be interested that Transistor allows you to have multiple shows. There are links in the description for both of these, and as do many platforms, Transistor offers a 14-day free trial, so I recommend checking it out. Now we have recorded the audio, created a podcast, and published it. We can now share the podcast with our church or invite friends to listen in. If you found value in this content and want to see more in the future, please hit subscribe. And if you have any questions or if there's a topic you want to see more of, leave a comment below and I'll see what I can do. Additionally, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram if you have questions that are more lengthy in conversation. I post additional content on Instagram daily at Crazy Amazing Designs that further covers topics from these videos. Well, thanks so much for watching and we'll see you guys next time.